their driving ability is going to be, you're going to be able to see the impairments on it, right? And that they were more impaired than just the alcohol alone. Yeah. The, well, they, they, were the, to, yeah. they were doing things like you just testified to, that they were, you know, swerving around and, and uh, uh, were they braking differently and things like that? Yeah, they broke it all down. I don't have that study with me, but they, it was different, noticeably different. But their conclusion was that a little bit of alcohol below the legal limit and a little bit of marijuana together can make you more impaired than the alcohol alone. So um, I forget exactly what it was, what the levels they had were, but like an old four and a little marijuana would be make you as impaired as a no eight or a one or something like that. Anyway, that was the take home message that you get the effects of the two drugs together um, increase the effects. You could see it. That's what they were saying. You could see well, the effects. You could just watch these people drive and they were driving all over the place. I don't know if that's, ex I would characterize it exactly that way because they were looking at the, the deviation from the position. I don't know how exactly robust the effects were. I don't know if people on the sidewalk were going, well, look at that guy, or whether it was really all just a more matter of millimeters of the car and how fast they were swerving. Um, it, was, it was detectable by the methods they used, whether it was really obvious to people on the sidewalk. Study didn't even address that question. Well, it seems pretty detectable when you talk about uh, braking difficulties, swerving all over the place. I mean, they that report, you read it, they really saw a big change there, right? They did see a change. The, the change was biggest with the highest levels of alcohol and with drugs, the changes were moderate at the lower levels. And uh, one thing I also got out of that uh, article that was interesting to me was what they said about marijuana when there is no alcohol present. And they said that it's tough to sort of get a correlation between being impaired and smoking marijuana, right? Levels of marijuana do not correlate well with impairment as well as even as alcohol levels do. Yes, Marilyn Houston has found that many times as well. The levels, the subjective effects or the effects people report are most intense at the beginning of the smoking period and less so. So at some point your THC is going up and it's coming down. Um, actually, even alcohol people report this as well. They feel the effects most intensely on the upswing more than the downswing. But, but as far as the marijuana goes in the study, and they were referring to all kinds of other studies. Uh, in this crazy Amsterdam driving study. They yeah, said that, to correlate the two. so what they were saying was it's it's difficult to correlate how much somebody, THC somebody has in the system with actually how impaired they really are, right? Yes. Now, uh, uh, carboxy-THC, that compound doesn't have any type of uh, uh, impairing effects on itself, does it? That's correct, it does not. So if if uh, we got, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Jones, who was standing next to Mr. Smith over there at the, the drum circle, and we brought him over to our time machine, and he told us he hadn't been smoking any marijuana at all. And so you and I, uh, being fans of the Amsterdam driving study, say, okay, well, let's take, let's inject you with carboxy-THC. Let's do it. And he goes, no, but we just do it anyways. Now, if we waited around and watched him, would, would he have any impaired effects on his, would he be impaired from that? I would not expect the carboxy alone to have any effects on him. If somehow you could give him only the carboxy, no, I would So, So we could give him a, we could say, all right, Mr. Jones, I've got a shot with five gallons of carboxy THC in it. All right, get ready. Boom, and we give it to him, and he wouldn't be impaired, right? I would not expect him to be. I don't think that experiment's ever been done. Well, <laughs> that's because we're not doing experiments together. Now, the thing is, is that in reality, and, and all joking aside, the, the carboxy THC molecule has no impairing effects on the body. That's correct. And when we're saying marijuana impairment, that's the THC. Yes. And in this case, Paul, he didn't have any THC in his system, in his blood, right? That's correct. So all he had was 10 nanograms of this uh, metabolite that really doesn't do anything to you, right? That is, well, maybe and maybe not. He doesn't have any of his blood, but he may still have some in his system. And the effects um, are not only dependent on the presence of the drug, as you have just said yourself. So the, the drug triggers some effects that last beyond the presence of the drug. And it, in Maryland studies have found that as well. So you have carboxy THC. You know the person who smoked marijuana recently. Those effects are not going to dissipate immediately after the THC is gone. Those are effects, and depending on what abilities you're looking at, some abilities are impaired longer than others, are going to take some time to get back to baseline. So just because the person doesn't have any THC detectable in their blood,
blood. If they have carboxy THC, you can infer that they smoked it recently, and it is quite possible that some of those abilities are still impaired, even though the THC is not detectable in the blood anymore. But, but let's, be, let's, let's look at the science here and the, the stuff that you're talking about, these studies and everything else, because that's where you're basing your entire opinion on, right? My studies and my personal experience with the, the cases in Ohio. But, I mean, when you say personal experiences, you've never actually, have you ever actually interviewed somebody who had smoked marijuana? I've had defendants call me. Um, <laughs> well, that's got to be an interesting Outside of that, no. Okay, so outside of conversations over the phone you've had with defendants who I'm surprised that they got your phone number. Um, <laughs> but uh, outside of that, you've never actually seen somebody who's smoking marijuana, right? Not in lab studies, no. Okay, but in a lab study, you've never seen it, right? Correct. Uh, so really, what we're looking at are these, these studies. And so let's talk about the, the, the crazy Amsterdam study again. Wasn't it in that study that most of the people's effects, the impairing effects of the marijuana, they wore off relatively quickly, right? Um, most in, in that study, I don't remember that it addressed that specifically, but Maryland studies have done so. And most of the subjective effects wear off relatively quickly. So if you ask people, are you still feeling good from the marijuana, you know, within a few hours, they'll tell you no. But there are other tests you can do, lab tests, to show that there is still some impairment in coordination. There's still some impairment in, in memory and in word recall. Those effects last longer than just the subjective effects. Of but those those lab tests, they don't really. I, I think that that the Amsterdam test really looked at what real life situations are. Right? That's a real life situation. It's about as real as you can get. Right? Well, no, it's not. I mean, it, it, it is in the fact that it's driving. But in that study, as well as in Maryland Houston's studies, you can't give people anywhere near the amount of drugs that people take off in the field on the street. Um, you can't get people up to a 3-5 alcohol to see how, how much it takes them to pass out. You can't give them the amount of cocaine that we see in every day in our cases because it would be dangerous. So they are limited in some ways, but if they tell you that at low levels you have these effects, you can be pretty sure that at higher levels you probably have those effects and more. But with, with Paul, he only had 10 grams of carbide THC. It sounds like that's a pretty low amount, right? Um, it's not real high. That was at the time of the blood drug. Okay. All right. All right we're going to take a break now. Can we have the attorney's approach, please? You can sit down. <coughs> <coughs> Take a ten minute break. All right. Court is in recess.